Hello and welcome to another video. So for regular viewers you might remember I've been having some problems 3D printing lately. And my Creality CR10 finally gave up the ghost so I did have to buy another one of which I've gone for the Creality K1 Max. So I thought I'd do a little unboxing and a first print review. The reason why I've gone for the Creality K1 Max, to be honest, there wasn't that many choices. I need a 300 by 300 bed at least and I wanted a Core XY so I had a faster printer and it was all enclosed. When you add them together, there isn't that many choices. I think all of the bamboo lads stop out 250 millimeters. These smaller Creality's do the same, and most of the printers seem to be 220 to 250. So I've got the printer to unbox, and I did buy one of those fancy build plates, so we'll see what that's like. And then once it's set up, we'll get some test prints done and see how it compares. Yeah, magnetic fancy build plate. Looks good at least. It does come very well packaged, You've got the manual on top, plenty of foam to hold it all into position and most of the printer is built up, there's just some of the glass sheets like the top that is held separately. Oh, it looks very fancy. All of the parts and accessories that come with it that you need are all just nicely also packaged into the middle of the printer with all the foam surrounding it. Worth noting as well, you do get a roll of their Hyper PLA filament, as well as a smooth magnetic build plate with the printer. Fresh white reel, why white, I don't know, but whatever. Oh, I don't like it, I don't like it. I have to say, it is pretty tight in that box, and you are aware there's a lot of glass involved. So first impressions, well packaged and it looks a pretty cool looking thing in my opinion. It kind of looks like something you'd expect to see on The Expanse or some other sci-fi TV show. And when compared to the CR10, you can see how far they've come and how much more advanced it is just by looking at it. Something that's actually interesting to note is it's pretty much the same size as the CR10, apart from the CR10 is a little bit longer with the bed slinging back and forth and it's obviously taller. But to say it's got the full enclosure built in and everything, it's impressive how small the K1 Max actually is while still having a 300 by 300 bed. Something that's really great about this printer is it doesn't take long to set up at all, but first it is time for the satisfying sticker peel. I have to say it is all pretty fancy in here. I do actually think these are great value, you know, when you like look at the overall quality and then you've got all these little bits in here. Don't really know what any of them do. Ooh, a USB. All the tools, more tools than you get in a BMW toolkit. The hardest part of actually setting up this printer was this little screen. For some reason, the ribbon of wire with the plug on that plugs into the back of the screen is ridiculously short. Like it's literally only just long enough to actually plug into the screen and then the screen basically pushes down into place. If they made that ribbon just like an inch longer, it'd be far easier, but never mind. Once it's set up, there is a calibration check that needs to be done. I think it took like 11 minutes, but it did just do it by itself. And then once I'd got the filament loaded in, it was time to do a 3D benchy just to test it out and see what it's like. And this is where I was genuinely shocked at how fast this thing is. Compared to the old CR10, it's like a different world entirely. It actually boggles my mind how it manages to move around this fast and actually still be accurate of how there's no, you know, play in it shaking backwards and forwards that actually makes it inaccurate despite the fact that it, the whole thing does vibrate quite a lot and you definitely need the extra set of feet that come with it actually mounted to the printer it remains consistently accurate throughout and that is nearly a 3d bench you done in 17 minutes 42 apparently which is outrageous to me especially when i'm coming from the cr10 which i think was an hour and 40 minutes and now I'll just take a brief glance over at Creality Print, where I got the parts of the helmet sliced and ready to print. You can pretty easily rotate the design around, move it left and right, make sure it's centered where you want it. And then on the right, you can add your supports, you can change your infill settings, and on the top right, there is a lot of presets for different types of filament. After you've then sliced the file, you do have the options to either export to Creality Cloud, send straight to the printer, or export it to USB, which is my preference as I don't really trust putting these things online. I also don't really trust connecting the printer up to Wi-Fi and having the potential issues of over-the-air updates. Also, unfortunately, at the minute, you can't use Fusion 360 as the slicer, which is a little bit annoying to me because I did get quite used to it. But nevertheless, we'll get the USB plugged in and print this helmet out and see what it comes out as. 
We'll start off with the visor part of the helmet, which you just go into the USB drive function and then select it on the screen. I decided to do it facing down, of course, with supports just to see what it actually came out like and to see what happened when we took the supports off, whether it was clean or not. Then moved on to the main part of the helmet. This all, by the way, is at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And this main part of the helmet took around 16 hours and the visor took around 14 hours. And here we have the main part of the helmet printed out. Get the supports off and get it looked at. And here we have the helmet printed and assembled. You can see I basically ran out of this colour filament when it got to here, but it did actually give me the chance to see what it's like when I actually change it. And this was actually some old filament. I don't even know if it's PLA plus, but you can see it actually added on and worked pretty well there. I've barely sanded this or done anything to it. So you can see how it's just got the finish out of the printer. I also want to experiment to see what happened with supports in certain places. So if you look at the visor here, you can see all the support marks all around here and down here, and basically over the front. But they do sand up pretty easily as PLA does. As you can see, I just started to sand a little bit here to see what it was like. Overall, I think it's really impressive. And the actual speed that it did it all at, even though this ended up using more supports on other models, it took at least half the time, if not less. You can see how it pulls out. and then rotates over the back and then comes back down and presses in. You can also see some support marks at the back which would sand up pretty easily so it doesn't think that much of a big of a problem. I did just scratch over the side there to see how it flanned off. The only thing I didn't like is where Corality Print put the supports. I did prefer doing it in Fusion 360 because I could really select where I put the supports in that, which also helped to reduce print times quite considerably to say it's such a big piece that I was doing on a CR10. Of which we'll get the other helmet and see what it looks like. And here we have the old one printed on the CR10. To be fair, I can't complain at it for what the CR10 was. It still did a pretty good job, still did the entire helmet. And because I could slice it in Fusion 360, what I was able to do is basically print this main part here with no internal supports at all. Which, if you see inside the wispiness of here, you can see how it just kind of messed this lip up a little bit. But it's still pretty impressive to say that it printed the entire thing with no supports. It was basically an angle like that. Obviously, the visor was done separately. However, again, being able to use Fusion just allowed me to reduce those supports right down, which I at least, I haven't found a way to do that in Creative Print yet. And there doesn't appear to be a way to do so. But of course, printing quality is way superior on the K1 Max. You can see here, for example, there's barely any lines in the finish. There's just little ridges that can be taken away easily with sanding. Whereas if you look at the Creality CR10, there's plenty of ridge lines all over, a lot more sanding to do, and in general, a worse finish, as you'd expect. A big plus point to me is just how fast you can basically move on from different prints. No getting the glue stick out and cleaning all the board and all that mess, which enabled me in the time that it took to basically print this a while ago, I was able to print this and do all of these other prints at the same time, which this little bolt tray alone was gonna take 27 hours with the CR10 and I think it took five or seven hours on the K1 Max. So what do I think about the Creality K1 Max now? I've had it working for a few days. Well, frankly, I think the quality is astounding, especially for the money. If anything, it gives me a little bit of anxiety knowing how screwed we are if China just disappeared. How fast it is, how accurate it is, the quality, how everything just works really well. Do I think it's a printer you should get if you're just starting out? Or do I think it's a printer you should upgrade to from, say, the CR10 like I've done? Yes, 100%. Now, I'm pretty new to 3D printers in the whole 3D printing world, to be honest. I started with the Creality CR10 that's basically now just let go. And it's been a great machine, but the amount of time that I've spent on it, the amount of time just cleaning it, maintaining it, waiting for it to finish prints, I'd have been far better off actually just borrowing money and then getting the newer printer. 
with the time you save, with the filament you save from it not going wrong, probably even from the energy bills, it actually works out better to just get it on Klarna, even if you don't have the money to buy it outright. Even just the amount of time spent on sanding being reduced as much as it's gonna be, makes it a worthwhile buy. The only thing I don't like is the fact that I can't use Fusion 360 as the slicer. I'd got really used to basically designing all of my stuff and even having particular faces involved in the 3D model to help with the 3D printing, to put supports onto certain pieces. I found that good and then you're not having to go and export it to different programs and files and all the rest of it. But really for all the pluses that is just a little niggle. So if you like the video and you're interested in the project, please feel free to like and subscribe and I hope to see you on the next video.